Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial and this is going to be a sort of conversion of a Photoshop tutorial done by the F64 Academy. Now the F64 Academy is one of my favorite sort of Photoshop tutorial sites to look at to sort of try and get some ideas for Affinity Photo conversions. Now in this one they're looking at repairing or hiding a blown out area in a sky. Now pretty much everybody who's ever taken a photograph at some point will have taken a picture with a blown out area of the sky. Sometimes you know, it just can't be helped. Now I know this picture is not particularly brilliant in any way shape or form but it was the best one I found of what pictures I've taken where I have the raw file um, so I can then convert it and sort of show you how best I think my, the conversion of this F64 Academy tutorial will go. I wanted the raw file because I wanted to sort of show that even though you've got the raw file which has got as much more data in it than a JPEG there is no data in a blown out area to retrieve. I mean I can drop the highlights down but you still sort of have that area up there you can sort of mess around with exposure and sort of brightness black spots and all that but because there is no data to retrieve up there you know there is nothing you can do about it now some people will like that look and some people will hate it so I'm not going to develop this Um, I'll come to this which is the cropped version of that picture that I just showed you and as you can see I've made some adjustments here as well in the photo persona just to sort of get this near to where I'd w I would want it but like I said we still have this area up here that has no data now I'm not going to try and hide it completely to sort of so it's not there at all because obviously you you want some reason for there to be sunlight on the sea here for example showing through the cloud so you don't want to sort of totally obliterate it but we are going to sort of try and reduce the size of that sort of blank area up there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a merge visible layer so I have a layer that has all the adjustments that I've made previously and and then we're going to sort of use the clone stamp tool now you, you can obviously use the clone stamp tool on the actual image layer but if you do that you sort of you're not leaving yourself any wiggle room for altering things in any way shape or form so it's best to do it on a new blank layer so I'll click on this icon down here to add a blank layer come to the clone brush tool and in the settings I've got the opacity 100 hardness on 0 and the most important one we need is this source option because at the by default it's current layer well the current layer is a blank layer so there is nothing to clone what you need to have is current layer and below and this means that the areas you clone will be put onto the current layer which is the blank layer but it will clone it from the layer below so the first thing I want to do is so I want to sort of continue this white trail up here into the this area up here so to select an area you need to hold down the alt key on a PC and I believe it's option on a Mac and to select an area so once you press that key you'll get this sort of cross here so I'm going to put it about there and click and then as you can see it is sort of 
so I'm extending that trail a bit further over I mean obviously there is a bit of repetitiveness there but I'm going to be covering that up anyway or some of it now because I don't want to sort of reclone from that sort of area uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add yet another pixel layer a blank one and again make sure it's on current layer and below so I can then select a different area to clone from so let's say if I clone from over here and just add a few extra clouds and I'll again hold down the alt key and clone a little bit here and maybe even a little bit from down there Right, so that is hiding that blank area or lost area a bit better now. Now, because this is on a layer by itself, you can come to the move tool, you can move it around, you can rotate it even. So if there is any repetitive areas, it's a lot less noticeable because although yeah there, I'm cloned, originally I cloned from this area and put it here but that area is now over there and flipped over so it's less noticeable that it is repetitive so that is not too bad I'm quite happy with that I'm not going to alter the first layer that I made because I wanted to continue that trail a bit further over now in the F64 Academy video, once he's done this part of it, he then went on to use what in Photoshop is called Blend If. Now the nearest thing to that that I know of in Affinity Photo is Blend Options. And to get that you, you sort of highlight the layer that you want. And you click on this cog that comes up with Blend Ranges and you get this blend options box now you've got the source layer ranges and the underlying composition ranges now personally I've tinkered with this and it doesn't seem to have vast amount of effects the Photoshop blend if did seem to have much more effect on the F64 Academy's video but you could tinker with this and try and blend in sort of the clouds a bit better As you can, hopefully you can see that there is some change happening but it's not vast and again if you could try it with the underlying options and sort of see what suits your taste in your particular picture um, I'll, I'll just leave it like that for example and hopefully you can see that I've now sort of masked out that lost pixel area and hopefully it does make the picture look a bit better um, but that's all down to personal taste and choice but it's just an idea of a way that you can sort of hide this blown out highlights area in your images so hopefully that has been of some help and like I said before it's all down to personal taste whether you think you want to cover up a blown out area or whether you like it within the picture because it shows where the sunlight's coming from so thank you for watching and goodbye